<sighs> Guys, I've been stuck in the benchmarking cave for the past two weeks. We have done a whole bunch of different product reveals. We've also have reported on a bunch of different product leaks. And to be honest, this motherboard behind me has been waiting patiently in the shadows while in parallel actually being the Intel test bench for our upcoming RTX 3080 review. But today we're gonna give it the spotlight. We're gonna give this ASUS ROG Strix Z490E Gaming the proper attention that it deserves. And we're gonna confirm or deny that this board is as good as the rest of the ones we've reviewed in the past. Stick around, it's gonna be good. Now I've reviewed several different ASUS motherboards, both over at Tom's Hardware as well as here on the channel. And it shouldn't come to a surprise to anybody that I am a huge fan of the ROG Strix brand when it comes to motherboards. They are constantly topping the charts in terms of performance, aesthetics, overclocking capability, and in my opinion, their UEFI is just top notch. So today's review, we're gonna actually start by looking really closely at its design. The ROG brand paves the way in the industry when it comes to aesthetics, and this motherboard in particular provides an aggressive style with sharp angles along its heat sinks and coverings while accenting its boards with RGB flare that the builder can control. Thermal padded heat sinks fully contain the M.2s, and a thick vented heatsink covers this board's 14 plus 2 VRM design. Much of the design thinking for this board is very similar to other ROG boards, so let's actually take a closer look and dig under the hood of what makes this board tick. This motherboard does provide an integrated I.O. panel, and it has output connections for both HDMI and DisplayPort 1.4, as long as your Intel processor supports it. There are plenty of USB available as well, with an impressive four 10 gigabit USB 3 ports, two 5 gigabit USB 3, and four USB 2.0. As for networking, ASUS is forward thinking and offers Wi-Fi 6 in all of its glory, and they're upping their wired network connections with Intel's 2.5 gigabit ethernet network controller. However, this controller, the Intel i225V, has both a hardware issue as well as an issue with its driver that are causing some instability across the board. It's not really an ASUS problem, but more of an Intel problem. And the symptom we see in this particular board is that when you reboot the machine, uh, the network controller just doesn't come back up. The easy solution for this is to, of course, go into the network control panel and just turn it off and on again. Pretty classic solution, but I do recommend going and rolling back to a different firmware driver. I've got some links down in the description if you wanna read up on that in case you're hitting this same issue with another different motherboard. And I would make sure to follow all of those instructions in those articles before you go ahead and issue an RMA request with the SUS. As for audio, ASUS's venerable S1220A codec is going to be driving all five of the gold-plated analog audio ports as well as the digital SPDIF port uh, on the back. Features include dual op-amp amplifiers, auto impedance jack sensing, and other creature comforts provided through the audio software stack. PCIe is well equipped on this board and you are looking at Gen 3 across the board when it comes to enablement. The Intel 10th gen processor attaches to two by 16 slots and the PCH provides one by 16 slot wired with four lanes while also providing three additional by one slots. Fast storage is another robust suite for this board with two fully wired PCIe NVMe by four slots. If you do decide to go with some SATA drives, six ports are available. However, once you start to install some M.2 drives, you do start to disable some of the SATA drives, so I would definitely consult the manual in case you're gonna be trying to mix your storage solution. Now, if you're looking for a build video, we did do this build back in June over at our Twitch channel, and I'll provide a link down below in case you wanna see what the building process is like on this board, but we're gonna go ahead and look our, look our way around the board and see what it looks like under the microscope. Taking a glance, this board provides a whole bunch of features that are gonna be very beneficial to both enthusiasts as well as overclockers looking to push the limit. At the bottom left of the board, we have a Q-code debug output for quick diagnostics. Also, the back IO panel has a BIOS flashback button just in case you do corrupt your UEFI. In case you manage to break yours like ours did in shipping, it's really easy to access and all you need is kind of like a really thin or short stick to push in and it's really as simple as that. Fan headers are scattered across the board in all the different regions, and I do believe they are all rated for 12 watts, and I think the pump is rated for 36 watts. Some ports have default PWM settings, so consult the manual before plugging things in. 
This ROG Strix Z490E has plenty of USB ports across the board. There's going to be a USB uh, 3.1 Gen 2 front panel header as well as a 3.0 header and a couple different USB 2.0s. And then for anyone that's going to be using RGB, there's going to be two 5 volt addressable pins as well as two 12 volt pins. And they're conveniently one of each at the top and bottom of the board. Again, you can use the Aura Sync and all that good other software to drive what other colors and patterns you're looking for. Now, I really do think the Z490E from ASUS is a great motherboard, but I do have one small nitpick, and that is the additional VRM cooling. I do appreciate that ASUS gives us the option to install this thing, but I find that entire top left quadrant of the board to be a little bit redundant. The fan really can only fit in one of two orientations. The mounting location is quite problematic, and even without using it, the 8 plus 4 pin CPU 12 volt connectors really are challenging to access. Looking past that, the Z490E from ASUS is a well-rounded product and it satisfies a lot of the needs for any enthusiast or overclocker. Now, it wouldn't do justice to this product to not mention the UEFI. If you guys want me to go more in depth with the ASUS UEFI in general, let me know down in the comments. We can cover all the different menus and submenus. But with the Z490E gaming here, we actually had a really nice experience. I noticed when I was driving through the menus, all of the different options had additional text down below to show me what it meant. And then overclocking was a breeze as always with the SUSE products. And then even adjusting some of the memory settings, that was really straightforward as well. And I even tinkered with their AI based overclocking tool and it was well described and implemented even if the result isn't as good as a manual overclock. All right, so let's start to talk about the tests and the test setup. Now, back here, we actually have uh, the exact same test setup that we had for the 10700K build. You'll actually notice the graphics card's not installed for some of the reviews we've got coming up. Uh, but some notal, notable inclusions with this, we're gonna be rocking the Fractal Design S36 360mm AIO. We're also gonna be rocking four eight gigabyte sticks of Corsair Dominator Platinum. We will be down clocking them to DDR4 3200 for more uh, you know, transferability of data. Lastly, EVGA did provide us a long time ago the RTX 2080 Super. It's gonna be probably the backbone to all of our graphical tests as well as our videos that we, coming, we have coming up in the next couple weeks. Now, let's take a look at the data and see if this ROG Strix has what it takes to compete with a more value-based option. Now Z490 hasn't been around for all that long and I've only had access to two different motherboards to test. But in general, you know, motherboards tend to be within the margin of error in terms of performance across the board. So rather than going through each of the individual charts, I'm gonna be throwing them up on the screen uh, pretty quickly. So hit pause if you wanna look at the data and I will be also posting them later on in the video in case y'all wanna see some of the specific tests I've got tested. I did test this board with Intel specified board power limits, both enabled and disabled, and I found it pretty remarkable that despite the reduced power and frequency, the Intel specification on this board manages to keep up with, the, with both of the unconstrained test samples. With applications and synthetics, the MSI and the ASUS board both trade blows, while the Intel limited power constrained uh, tests actually trailed by just a little bit. With the gaming benchmarks, the MSI MAG Z490 Tomahawk does manage to score higher uh, FPS values in many of the games, but again, surprisingly, the power limited results are on par with both contenders today. Now shifting gears, let's look at the power and the thermals of this particular 10700K sample. Looking at the base power consumption numbers, the Z490E struts its stuff with superb efficiency with limits disabled. And considering the temperatures we are hitting, it's surprising how well the Z490E manages to hit its performance numbers at the reduced processor wattage and temperatures. Unfortunately, I didn't grab the VRM temperatures when I was testing the MSI motherboard, but regardless, the ASUS VRM design on this Z490E is just way overkill when it comes to you know day-to-day -day driving and modest gameplay and it really leads to our overclocking results we'll talk about here in a second and just how much over engineered it is important note i am reporting just raw temperature measurements in this chart i will be trans translating this into uh, delta t over ambient in order to stay consistent with reporting but for today's tests all of this data has been collected in a room that's been controlled to right about 23 degrees Celsius. 
Intel's 9th and 10th gen processors are well known for hitting 5 gigahertz, and with the ASUS Z490 here, we're able to hit that on our processor sample with only minor adjustments to our vCore. 5.1 gigahertz is easy to hit as well, but we do have to make adjustments to the vCore, the VCCIO, as well as the system agent voltage, and I think we even increased the load line settings just a bit. Now, 5.2 gigahertz, we were able to get there with the voltage settings, but we did happen to hit some thermal threshold uh, limiting there. So if you've got a more potent cooling solution than I do, I definitely see the ASUS Z490 being able to supply enough power and current to get your overclocking needs met. While at 5 gigahertz, we managed to stay below 90C on the VRMs, which is excellent, considering we can also add the included 40 millimeter fan. As for the chart on the screen, I was using the 5.1 gigahertz voltage settings, which are definitely on the spicy end of the spectrum. For comparison, I'm also including the stock no limits power and temperatures against the overclocking results, just to show you that even with increasing the voltage and the frequency, the Z490E manages to maintain its stability while keeping its own power and thermal parameters in check, as long as you have a cooling solution that allows. For memory, I'm going to do things a little bit differently for this review. Rather than overclocking a single stick of memory and calling it done, I've thrown in a variety of Samsung B die as well as Hynix C die kits into the ring, but I've also tried a couple different 2 dim and 4 dim configurations to see just how robust this motherboard's memory design is as well as how well it can handle pretty aggressive overclocks with varying qualities of DRAMs. I was thoroughly impressed with being able to go all the way to DDR4 4200 on our Samsung B die kit, which was rated for 3200, with only modest CL18 timings. Unfortunately, a great motherboard design isn't a magic wand when wishing some DIMMs past their current XMP profile. <coughs> Viper. <coughs> all right, guys, it's final thoughts. Let's check it out. The ASUS Z490 ROG Strix Gaming E motherboard here is a great option for a motherboard. Uh, we did see a couple different issues on this specific sample, mainly related to shipping as well as the Intel known hardware issue. Despite that issue, this motherboard is a great offering for anyone wanting to get a top tier motherboard and wanting to jump into the Intel Z490 platform today. It might even be good enough for some enthusiasts that want to overclock the snot out of this thing with some exotic water cooling. You know, I don't have that much, but man, it sure has enough power and stability to provide that service. Now, I wouldn't consider this board of value, considering there are four other ROG Strix Z490 offerings. The Z490H goes to the bare minimum with its design, opting to go with a 12 plus 2 VRM, no Wi-Fi, and reduced USB connections. The Z490G is the micro ATX variant, and it does have reduced PCIe, but it does include Wi-Fi 6. The Z490A mirrors the base model, but with the addition of some of the USB 3.0 connections. And lastly, the Z490F ups the VRM phases to 14 plus 2, just like our Z490E we've got on board, uh, but it lacks the Wi-Fi module. Here, value is strictly in the eyes of the builder. Now, all of these are probably going to perform very well together, and they're all going to be made out of top-tier materials and have really robust designs. All right, so ASUS's ROG Strix lineup in the Z490 platform definitely stacks up with the rest of their uh, product lineup all across the different sockets and the different uh, chipsets. And I'm really pleased with just how well the Z490E was able to perform today. Though there is a premium when you're joining that republic of gamers, membership does have its benefits. And today, those benefits are stability, performance, aesthetics, and just a really awesome time. All right, guys, that's the review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I, again, I love doing reviews. If you like tech stuff like this and deep dives into hardware, hit the subscribe button down below. We're going to be doing all sorts of tech content going into fourth quarter this year. Make sure you hit that bell icon as well. And if y'all are interested in seeing this stuff live on channel, uh, go over to my Twitch page, twitch.tv slash theturk. I stream on Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays and we cover tech stuff all the time. We've been like talking about GPUs nonstop lately for obvious reasons, uh, but we're also gonna be looking at some of the next gen consoles once those release. So stop by, say hello, and uh, join our Discord if you wanna chat with some fellow techies. So guys, thank you again for coming by the channel. I hope you've had a great time. We will catch you in the next one. Take care.